Which pressure fermenter is gonna be right for you? What are the features that you're looking for when you're looking at a pressure fermenter? So we're gonna look at some of the things that make pressure fermenting great and choosing your tank, the one that's gonna be right for you or maybe the couple that's gonna be right for the things that you wanna do when you brew. So the last time we talked about pressure fermenting and getting into it, we discussed um, spunding valves and how they're kind of the uh, same thing as your airlock, but for holding pressure inside and relieving pressure from the pressure fermenter. So for us at Keg King, we come up with a lot of different varieties of pressure fermenter that might be right for the kind of style of brewing that you're gonna be doing. And the features that you're looking for, be it dump valves, uh, temperature control, cleaning kits, all sorts of other things, have to be considered before you buy. So one of the obvious things that you're gonna have to consider when you're getting a pressure fermenter is what batch size are you brewing to begin with? What do you want to wind up with when you're finished fermentation? For most home brewers, that's gonna be the 19 liter keg. So we base most of our batch sizes on being able to achieve a volume of 19 liters to fill one Cornelius keg, which is about the five gallon batch size. So a double batch is two kegs and a triple batch would be three. We have pressure fermenters in our lineup at Keg King that will accommodate single and double batch. So if you do triple batch, you might need a big one and a little one, or you can get three little ones. It's kind of up to you. So another big consideration is the space that you have to ferment in. The fermentation space that you might be using could be a small fridge or an upright fridge. It could just also be a temperature controlled area that holds a consistent temp, because temp control is key to fermentation. So a really important decision when you're choosing your pressure fermenter is whether or not you want a dump valve. Now the dump valve is going to allow you to extract yeast and sediment from the bottom of the fermenter, which if you collect your yeast, that's an important decision for you because you can repitch that yeast, reculture it, and especially if you are really one of those kind of brewers that has to have like a house culture yeast in your beer, you're gonna need a dump valve to be able to extract. Some brewers actually prefer not to have a dump valve. For no other reason than it's just easier. You can clean your fermenter on a keg washer upside down, real easy. You don't have the extra parts of the dump valve to have to clean out. And ultimately, you can still extract bright, clear fermented beer right from the top of the fermenter with the floating dip tube. We're giving you dry hopping ports at the top of the fermenter, which can easily be purged when you're dry hopping. So there's really no issue with oxygen ingress. Thermo wells, temperature control kits, and cleaning kits are all other accessories that are built into some of these fermenters behind me here. So those should be considerations of whether or not you want your life to be easy, or if you don't mind doing a little bit of manual cleaning for any of the things of these fermenters behind me. The 35 liter fermenter king. This is the G3 version, and it does include collection ball with a dump valve. That's the plunge valve on this one, which goes up and down, saves you some space. And you will also get with it the ability to upgrade to a temperature control kit and upgrade with a cleaning kit. So this is pretty much all the bells and whistles for a single batch. The 60 liter G3 Fermenter King is just the same thing as the 35, but with a lot more space. Again, you'll be able to have the collection vessel with it, cleaning kits, thermal wells, everything. This one's got all the bells and whistles as well. The G3 Fermenter King also comes in a snub nose version. So you have all the same features without a dump valve, but you still get a thermal well and all the other things that you'd want, like a cleaning kit and temperature control. The snub nose is one of my favorite fermenters just simply because it's so easy to use. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, which makes it simple to clean. It doesn't have a dump valve, but it does have the floating dip tube, pressure capabilities for carbonating, you can dry hop in it still. You can do everything you want to that you do with just about any other pressure fermenter. And it's a little bit lower in cost and it fits in a series four fridge. So if you're using a small bar fridge, this actually works for your single batch beers. It's a 35 liter pressure fermenter. So you can do batches even a little bit larger than 23 liters if you decide to. And of course the smallest member of the Keg King pressure fermenter lineup is the Fermenter King Junior. It is a small 20 liter pressure fermenting keg 
and you can still get the beer out of it because it has a floating dip tube. It's great because you can get a couple of these into a Series 4 fridge, which is your small bar fridge. So it will fit two of those. And it's really great for people who have space concern. It's really affordable, it's really fun to use, and it's just handy to have around a brewery for any situation. If you need an extra keg, off you go with the Fermenter King Jr. And if you need an extra, say, 18 liters of fermented work kit or whatever, this is the one. Our entire line of PET pressure products are pressure checked, and we're not just talking spot checked, each and every single tank is tested to five bar right off the line. So this way we can ensure that there's a safe operation for them. And each one of these is made here in Australia. So we're really proud about that fact as well. So we hope this helps you decide which one of these PET pressure fermenter products might be right for the kind of brewing that you want to do under pressure in your own brewery. Thanks for watching, brewers.